gosh, it looked so, it looks so nice. I am in love. This is so cute. What's up guys and welcome back to yet another tutorial. This video is going to be one where I show how I go about creating the top half of this wedding guest outfit that I made. Now this is an outfit that I plan to wear for my friend's wedding in December but I could not just commit to showing the full dress. So I showed you how to make the top half which is a corset that is, it has a straight neckline a drapey detail that goes across the front across the arm to the back and it laces up the back of the top half now this is a style of finishing like that lace up detail i've never done before so i thought it would be really cool to try it out and show you guys how it went along i shared how to make the pattern shared the fabrics and showed the whole dripping process as well so you guys get maybe an inspiration for a future project that i could work for for yourself or for a client okay now would include pictures if i have pictures of the finished dress at the end or somewhere in the video so you guys see what the final outcome is like for the bottom i added a mermaid skirt that had good days similar to the cut of my wedding dress i already have a tutorial where i show how to make a mermaid skirt which i'm going to link down below so you guys can check that out you could also add a circle skirt a pencil skirt whatever style of skirt that you want to add to the bottom of the dress just go crazy have fun with it there is no rule on how it should particularly be made i just wanted something that was really elegant really refined and her wedding color for her friends was baby pink ooh, which is one of my favorite current colors so i was really excited to create this piece i hope you guys enjoy this project this intro is getting really long let's get into the tutorial okay let's do this these are the measurements i'm going to be working with to create this design these measurements only relate to the top half of the dress which is the corset that has the draped sleeve detail i have a video where i shared how to take your own measurement if you don't know how that works the corset has a total of six patterns with three panels each for the front and the back i'm going to be starting off with the front corset plan and i have myself some pattern paper here and on it i'm going to be drawing a short horizontal line which is going to become my bust line from this line downwards, I'm marking the distance from my bust to my waist, which is 6 inches. And then from the bust line upwards, I'm marking 3 inches. I'm going to go in and square these lines across so they help me plan the shapes that the front plan will have. Now the next thing I'm doing in here is just ensuring I'm happy with the length of the corset, which is a distance from that 3 inch point to the waistline. Now along the bust line, I am marking half of my nipple to nipple measurement and I'm going to draw a line that passes through that vertically. Along the bust line, I'm also marking a quarter of my bust measurement like so. And along the waistline, I'm marking a quarter of my waist measurement plus one inch for the waist that. And I'm just going to mark that on the side like this. And I'm going to connect those side points to make the side seam of the front of the corset plan. And then I'm going to mark away the waist that along that nipple point that we drew in earlier on. Now, at first, I drew in the dart shape like this, you know, the typical triangular point that goes from widest to the narrowest. And then along the neckline, I'm marking away a quarter of an inch. So it helps to shape the neckline nicer. This prevents the neckline from gaping when you have the piece on. Now I'm just going in here to draw the side of the neckline dart like so and then I'm going to the side seam and marking half an inch above the bust line and draw in the arm curve that connects to the neckline like so. My pattern master comes in very very handy at this point. Now I'm going in here to divide that side panel into two by drawing a slanted seam that goes like this. And then I'm just going into that waist that I drew earlier on and I'm reshaping it. So rather than go like a triangular shape, it curves in like this and that will take away any excess that would be under the bust. Now that I have that point done and marked away, I'm going to go into that slanted seam and take away half an inch from the top of that seam. Now I'm drawing in a line that goes like this. 
and I'm going to ensure that the edge of the third panel connects with the edge of the second panel. That's why I'm drawing in this particular point like so. Now because I, I took away half an inch from the top, I'm adding it back into the side seam just along that top area. So by the time we've traced up the panels and we stitched everything into place, I haven't lost any measurement for my bust area. Now I have the front plan which has a total of three panels. I'm going to go ahead and trace off each panel, add a seam allowance around all of the panels except panel one which will be cut on a fold and that's going to become the mid panel. Now I have the first piece uh, of my front corset. I have my grain line and my annotations like so. I have my second pattern with my notches added in there. And I also have the third panel which I would be cutting two pieces for and then one piece for the middle panel that goes on the front. Now moving on to the back corset plan, I'm going to be placing some paper over our front plan and then I'm going to trace off the waistline and the side seam because those are the same for the back as well. Now the back has a different neckline and it goes down to the bust line. So it curves downwards from the side seam and is somewhat straight across the back like so and that is the bust line. Now I'm going in here to mark away about a quarter inch from the center back edge just because I want the back to be apart so I can add my lace of detail. I'm also just going to be marking the points that I might be adding my loops. This I change later on in the video and you would see how. I also traced off the dots and helped me create the different panels that my back has. My back has a total of three panels as well which I'm going to be tracing off and adding seam allowance. Now this is a middle back piece which looks like so with seam allowance added all the way around and I'm going to be needing to cut two of this in the lace and in the lining as well. I have my middle sort of like piece that connects the side to that center back edge. I would be needing to cut two of those as well and then I have the third piece that goes on the side that connects to the front. Now that we have all of the patterns for the corset piece, this is what they look like. You should have a total of six, three for the front and three for the back. And once you're happy with everything, you've added all your annotations, your grain lines, your notches, it's time to go ahead and cut these patterns onto fabric. Now I used about five meters of fabric for the lace and about four meters of the complementary pink lining. I don't think I mentioned that anywhere in the video so I'm going to leave a list down below as well and also show you guys how I go about cutting and stitching this piece all together. Now I've pinned down my pattern onto the lace first and I'm just cutting out the front. I went ahead to cut out the back and then I also use the same pattern to cut the lining and the lining you will need to cut two sets of. One set is going to act as a background in quote for the lace because the lace is very transparent and then another set will be the real lining that the corset has. Now these are all of the pieces I cut. Feel free to play around with the lace or the print that your fabric has so you can create some really cool symmetric designs but I have all of my lace pieces which I just cut one set off and then I cut two sets of my lining pieces. Now onto sewing the corset all together. I have layered one set of the lining underneath the lace so that can sort of help to back up the lace and brighten up the color as well. Now the lace is like a peachy color because if you look closely that's what it looks like but I wanted it to be more baby pink so I ensured I got a baby pink lining and once you add that underneath the lace it sort of just lifts up the color. Now the first thing I'm doing here is just sewing with an edge stitch the lining behind the lace like so. I did this for all of the panels. You can overlock if you feel like that would be a much quicker process for you but this is what they all look like especially for the front panels. I just stitched on I would say like a half a centimeter seam allowance so that holds the lining to the lace and they sort of act as one fabric at this point. 
and i did this for all of the panels my intern actually helped me at some point because it just made the process go a lot quicker once we had all of the edges joined in place i pinned them together like this and i'm going to be actually sewing all of the seams together so we have one piece that go across the front all the way to the back now i'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance after doing that i took the piece to my iron and i ironed the seams open and flat because that would make it a lot easier to add the boning tunnels and the boning that the corset has now this is what it is looking like and i got a matching baby pink satin bias tape because i just wanted it to look really pretty on the inside as well so in terms of bias tape i got roughly three meters that's how much i ended up using and i got a wide one that looks like this now i'm just adding some pins to this first seam like so and i'm going to cut off the edge like this and the plan is to sew two sides of the bias tape to create a tunnel in the middle where i would pass the boning through now i've done all of that for all of the seams and i'm just going to take this in my machine and i'm going to sew the two sides of the tape along the seam allowance on the inside and after stitching that i would go back in and pass the boning through just ensure that the distance you have in the middle is wide enough to take the boning that you plan to pass through so if you're working with a slim boning you can afford to have that tunnel slimmer if it's a wide boning you have to have the tunnel a bit wider to accommodate the boning that you want to add now that i'm done stitching down all of the bias tape like so i repeated the joining for the lining so i just joined all of my lining panels together because that's going to help me finish the neckline of the corset now i'm going to place the lining right sides together and i'm going to be joining the neckline and the center back edges but before i sew it together i'm going to be adding the loops along the center back edges like so i changed my mind that i decided to add four loops one closer to the top one closer to the bottom and two in the middle that are part by about i'll say 1.5 inches now this is the total number of loops that i had i just used the same bias tape that i used to create my tunnels and i added some pins just to hold the lining onto the main corset piece now i'm going to be sewing from one center back edge around the entire neckline down the other center back edge and that would help to close off the top of the tunnel that would help to hold the loops in place and that would help to finish off the center back of the corset Now I'm just making my way to the other end of the neckline and down the other side of the center back to finish off attaching the lining to the corset like so. I turned this inside out, gave the piece a nice press, especially along the neckline. You can also add like an edge stitch that holds the seam allowance to the lining on the inside. Uh, I didn't do that, but you can do that if you want an even nicer finish. Now I'm going to go in and add the boning to the tunnels along the seam allowance and I'm using this boning that is covered in fabric. I'm just going to ensure that the boning is shorter than the tunnel on the top and on the bottom so it does not poke against my skin or against the seam. I'm just passing the boning into the tunnel like so and once I do this for the first one I'm going to repeat this for all of the tunnels that this corset has the boning is going to really help to add a lot of structure and definition along the waistline of the piece and I found that is what really gave a lot of definition to this dress when I finished it now that we have all of the boning in the tunnels I added some pins just to hold them in place and I'm going to take this to my machine and I'm going to be sewing that waist um, seam in preparation for it to be added to the waistline of the skirt. On here, I'm just sewing on a half centimeter seam allowance so that way I still have some seam allowance to join the corset to the skirt. Next up, I'm going to be making the straps that help me lace up the back of the top. And I cut a strap that measures 60 inches length and two inches width and i've just pinned the sides up like this i'm going to be sewing up the side turning it inside out 
and closing off the ends of the strap like so i gave mine a nice press to relax all of the seams and this is what my strap looks like now after this i'm going to go ahead to work on the most exciting part which is the draping i'm using two meters of this pink satin draping it feels like a silk satin combo now i've put right sides together and i'm going to be sewing up the sides and leaving an opening that is roughly five to seven inches so i can turn this piece inside out after stitching up the sides I'm going to take this in my machine and I'm going to be sewing up the sides, turn it inside out, close off the hole, iron it flat before draping onto the corset. Now I'm just sewing on a one centimeter seam allowance, making my way all the way around until I reach the point where I have my opening and then skip and continue on the other side. Now here I'm just turning the piece inside out like so and I'm going to be closing off the hole using an edge stitch just to ensure that there is no opening and from doing this once you have the piece draped on the body it's the right side both ways of the fabric okay so i have stitched the satin like this so the front and the back is fully covered i just ironed it down flat and maz and i are going to be draping away All right let's do this now Maz and I are going in here starting with the front and the plan is to drape from one side to the other side and we did it sort of like in a pleated way. So we started from the top and just made small pleats and up until the end and at first we just used pins to hold it onto the garment and onto the mannequin so once we were happy with the pleats and the drape on the front we then worked on the back now i'm thankful that my mannequin is the type that you can just pin into it and the pins actually stay so that way we were able to like play around until we were happy with the placement the way we wanted it now once we were happy with the front we turned the piece to the back and then on the back we allowed about 12 inches allowance for arm to go through so it sort of like creates like an off shoulder effect around the arm and then we started draping around that middle seam on the back so once we had done the same pleating draping effect we made sure that it was symmetrical on the left and on the right hand side we had to, to use it a few times until we got to the point that we were happy with the drape and I'm just going in here to lace up the back so it gives us a better view of the dress on the mannequin. Okay, so Maz and I are done pinning the, the roughly piece or the draping piece onto the bust. And then we left a little bit of like an opening here for the arm to go through like here and then that we pinned onto like the back seam and i just thought it was nice how it just fell just fell naturally on the back of the dress i think the obvious thing i can see here is i pinned my side too loose so that one i need to fix but basically all of these things that we've pinned we need to stitch by hand according to mass 500 hours 500 hours of work all this needs to be stitched by hand as well onto the dress so it stays put so all here all there and then we'll just let this side fall naturally on the back of the dress looks really lovely once it's all stitched we'll show you what it looks like <laughs> now i'm going in here and i'm hand sewing the drape onto the dress I'm actually glad that we left the pins on the piece so as I stitched I would take off the pins I started off with the front and I stitched the satin onto the dress so it actually holds the drape on the garment and it doesn't break or fall off with time I did this for the front and for the back drape detail that this piece has and when you are hand sewing things the secret is just to take your time and ensure that the stitch looks pretty on the outside as well so this is what the top half is looking like all done mass helps me complete the other side over there 
and then I did decide quickly this morning uh, can we see what the back looks like Ooh, that looks really nice that looks really really cool I think after try it on and we're happy with that then go on to finish the hemline let's probably overlock and stitch the hemline of the main dress and of the lining excited for this it's time for fitting this is what the dress looks like on oh my gosh it looks it looks so nice <laughs> i am in love this is so cute i love the neckline most especially i'm glad we went with this shape and even though it's a corset there's actually not there's not a lot of boob showing because i did this straight neckline and then this detail on the front is just so cute let's try and show you the back so the side looks like it's such a beautiful fit oh ah, it's a shame i can't wear it for the event but at least to have it for anything else that comes up in the future this is just so nice it's just so pretty really elegant as well so this is the piece all done i ended up well, i ended up my intern actually helped me finish the hemline but this is what it looks like i just loved how very soft and elegant this turned out it's a shame that i don't know if i'll even be attending this event because Nigeria has been added to the UK's red list, so traveling to Nigeria now is a bit problematic, uh, but we'll see, we'll see. This is the finished look. I'll put up pictures here so you guys see what the back, the full length, and everything of the dress looks like. But this is just so nice. This would also make a great, like, brides, maids type um, dress because... Even though it's strapless, you don't really see a lot of cleavage and a little bit of the arm is covered because of the drape. Oh, I think my favorite part has to be the back of the dress. Like, I've never done that lace-up feature on the, the back of a corset or a dress, so I'm just happy it turned out nice, okay? That's just my joy. But what do you guys think? Are we loving this? Are we wearing this? Are we recreating this? If you do, make sure to tag me. On Instagram at Kim Dave Designs. If you do enjoy this video, if you found it useful, inspiring, or informative, give this video a thumbs up and share it with anyone you think would enjoy it. I will leave all list the list of the materials that I use down below because I don't think I showed it in this video. So like how much fabric I used, um, lining, zips, everything. I'll share the list in the video description down below so you guys have that for your reference. But until my next video, have a good morning, afternoon, and evening, wherever you are. And compliments of the season, okay? I'll see you next time. Bye. I'm kind of new with apologies. Holding back, I got history. Because